Hello everyone and welcome to the uh, fourth video on relationships between two quantities. In this video I will take up the topic of direct proportion which is the third simplest kind of relationship that we see. Direct proportion problems are the kinds of problems where there are two quantities whose values are related such that scaling the value of one of them by a factor that means multiplying the value of one of them by a number forces the scaling of the value of the other by the same factor and that means that we have to multiply the value of the other quantity by the same number so one gets multiplied by two the other gets multiplied by two as well if one of them gets multiplied by three the other one gets multiplied by three and also, if one of them gets divided by 2, then the other gets divided by 2. That's the same as multiplying by 1 half. And if the value of one of them gets divided by 3, the value of the other will get divided by 3. That's the same as multiplying the value of both of them by 1 third. So, both of them get multiplied by the same number or both of them get divided by the same number. These are direct proportion problems. And the equation for these kinds of problems is in the standard form, Q2 is equal to K, which is a constant and has a known fixed value for a given problem. Then the key part is that we multiply by Q1. To explain how this equation captures the meaning of direct proportion problems, Let's take a look at an example. Let's say that k has the value 4, and so its value is fixed and will not change for this particular problem. Now, let's say that q1 happens to be 3, in which case q2 will be 12. If we double the value of q1, then we will be multiplying by a value that's twice larger, and the product will become twice larger. You notice that we doubled the value of q1 and q2 the value of q2 also doubled and you can do this for any number you can triple the value of q1 and you'll find that the value that the value of q2 also triples you can divide the value of q1 by 2 and the value of q2 will get divided by 2 now the second form and yes, uh, as, as before, uh, the K can, can assume any form or shape that it wants. The key is that Q2 is isolated, and on the other side, Q1 is being multiplied by. K could be negative K. It could be root K, so long as you multiply by Q1. And although we always prefer to write the numerical value first, if for some reason you would like to write Q1 first, then keep in mind that again, K can assume any form that it wants. The key is that Q1 is being multiplied by. We see this as 1 times Q1. It could be Q1 divided by K, which you can also write down in fraction or division form. Again, Q1 is being multiplied by. It is K that's being divided by. And that makes no difference. It could be that you multiply by root k, so long as q1 is being multiplied by. And again, this is 1 times q1. And I've talked about uh, the, uh, the view that if you're focusing on factors, the first one can be seen as 1 times is, uh, is something that I've discussed in detail in, in earlier videos. And so here I won't spend time on it. All right, uh, now we have the second form, which is the conservation form. And this form says that we have two quantities whose values are related such that their quotient is constant. If you divide them, you always get the same number coming out. doesn't matter how they change. When you divide them, you always get the same value. And that should make sense, because if there are two quantities, and let's say they both double, their division, their quotient, remains fixed. 
the conservation form can be written as Q2 divided by Q1 is equal to K with K in R. Now we can go from the standard form to the conservation form by rearranging the equation. Here, to isolate K, which is what we need for the conservation form, we take times Q1 and move it to the other side and turn it into divide by Q1. Now some of the properties of direct proportion relationships. In terms of changes, the change in the value of one of the quantities is equal to k times the value of the other quantity. I will not prove this here, but in a future video I will do that. Symmetry. And the question here is, suppose that we know that q2 is directly proportional to q1 which means if I double Q1, Q2 will double. If I triple Q1, Q2, Q2 will double. The question is, does it work the other way? Uh, so if I double Q2, will, does that mean that Q1 doubles as well? And the answer is yes. And we can actually prove this. Suppose that Q2 is directly proportional to Q1. That means Q2 is equal to K times Q1. We solve this for Q1. Switch sides. Multiplication by k turns into division by k on the other side. And this is the same as 1 over k times q2. Since k is a constant, 1 over k is a constant. And so q1 is directly uh, proportional to q2. My apologies, this should say proportional here. So symmetry does exist. As an example of a direct proportion relationship, suppose we have a situation where a car is traveling at a speed of 120 kilometers per hour. The distance that it covers after some time t is d equals 120 times t. And you notice that this formula, this equation, has the form of direct proportion problems. Here, q2 is distance covered. K is the fixed speed, 120 kilometers per hour. Q1 is travel time. And if I can tell that the relationship between D and T is direct proportion, then I can conclude the following. I can multiply the time, double the time, and at the same speed, I will cover twice the distance. If I drive for half as long, I will cover half the distance. If I cover three times the distance, then that means I traveled three times as long. I can also say, based on the conservation form, that the quotient of distance and time is fixed and it's equal to the speed, 120 kilometers per hour. Thank you for watching this video. In the next video, I will take up the topic of inverse proportion problems.